Welcome to another edition of the Smoke Box for Be Real TV. I'm Dr. Green Thumb, aka Be Real, with my very special guest, legendary Ricky Williams. Yes. What's up? Good to have you on the box, oh, bro. It's good to be here. I gotta say that for for a number of reasons, right? One, because you know I'm a football fan. And I recognize greatness, even though I was, you know, a fan of another team. I recognize great players, and you are definitely that. And more so than that is the sacrifice you made for the cannabis um, activism and and to be an advocate, man. I respect that so much because no one else has put their shit on the line quite like that bro and a tremendous respect so it's it's an honor to have you up in here thank you it's an honor to be here i mean i had here you go ahead and light it up first i had great role models you know i told you back at home i was in the room playing uh playing madden listening to cypress hill <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that's crazy hey what teams were you playing with on madden like uh what was your favorite team you played so i grew up in san diego so i was always messing the with the chargers all right on that makes sense Oh, this is nice. Yeah, we're, we're smoking uh, some insane, f insane flow on some funky field tips. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's one of our, one of the pieces, uh, one of the one of the strains we be having in the dispensary, man. Yeah. But you know what's cool is 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 the way that you came in the game was always not not through the opportunity of of uh, becoming a brand in cannabis. You were more like coming in as an advocate and educator if you will you know and and i think that was big i think that's why you know a lot of people have so much respect yeah it's just my experience i mean you know i made the decision to leave the nfl and one of the reasons is because of the, the rules about about smoking and i had to like wrestle with that myself that I, yeah. everything i gave up what did i do this for and it set my life on a totally different path. I never ever thought I'd be an, an advocate, but but here I am, and and I love it. it. You know, it's it's crazy because I mean, more and more athletes are 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 coming out and speaking for you know the usage of, of cannabis and CBDs and stuff like that over the prescribed drugs by the team doctors and and whatnot. And more and more, you hear. A lot of stories on how it it you know it took someone to educate them and some of them knew off the top you know because some are in some athletes are in the culture from day one you just don't hear about it but it, it's great to see you know guys that followed your lead in that and saying you know what this is what we stand for this is the benefits of it aside from recreational smoking this is what it's done for me you know and you know when i played true story Hall of Fame offensive lineman, my rookie year, called me over to his house and he sat me down and had a talk with me. And he, he brought out some flour, split open a, uh, a sweet, and rolled a blunt, lined it with uh, Vicodin. Oh, shit. <laughs> lined it with Vicodin. And, That's a new one. And he and he broke it down for me. He said, this game is rough and it's going to do something to your body. You got to find a way to take care of yourself. Hmm. And and it took me a while to, to get it, but I got to the point where I got tired of taking, I had an ulcer from taking the pills that the yeah. doctor gave me and I had to find another way to, to deal with pain. And I found coming home and, and lighting up and relaxing. I woke up fresh and ready to go the next day. Did you eat that blunt? Yeah. No, I said, did you eat that I blunt? I did, I did. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> what, is there an ashtray? Yeah, you could use yeah. that. Right. Yeah, you know, cause here's the thing, man. You know, I, I would imagine in every sport, you know, the team doctor's giving you you know, all these different things to help with whatever ailments and, you know, a lot of those drugs, you know, they may they may suppress whatever, you know, shit that's happening there. But in the long term, it's ruining, you know, other parts of your fucking organs, you know, in the long run somewhere else, you know, and they don't tell you that. You know, they don't tell you that. And I, I had to learn the hard way. I was 19 years old had to pop an eight advil a day just to practice and damn, went to the doctor shit, and he said you got an ulcer and so i said damn. damn and and the studies they're doing now are showing all these drugs they're giving us first of all guys are getting addicted to opioids and second of all the other drugs are killing our liver and our kidneys and, and you know we play football for 10 10 years if we're lucky we have the rest of our lives we have to think of right and uh at least for me i found this is a much better solution yeah and they were fining you like heavily right it's interesting like the kind of the kind of drugs they give us it makes us numb to our bodies right 
But this, I find it puts me more in touch with my body. Right. It's, it's a, a different, a different approach. <clears throat> yeah, you know, because I think you you realize, okay, whether you need to like uh, slow down on your recovery or you know push harder, it, it it does put you in tune. I think you know where the other stuff. It's like you said, we we had Mike Tyson in here, right? And he was talking about they were giving him prescription some some sort of prescription drugs, and he couldn't feel nothing. Yeah. He just felt like great. But he didn't realize, you know, the damage he could do to himself because he doesn't necessarily feel all that shit. The toll. Yeah, the toll that it takes of you being on something that doesn't allow your body to feel the pain so that you can play through it. And, you know, I, th I think that's what most players go through now, you know. And, and But I think there's, like I said, dudes that followed your lead, they're like, okay that's interesting what he's doing and then when you know they saw you actually sacrifice your career to go in this this route i think a lot of people low-key rallied behind you and like educated themselves you know i i get that more and more today i mean i, I had a, a podcast i did earlier today and, and the host was telling me that you know that when he was in high school his parents were giving him a hard time about smoking and then when my story came out he felt emboldened to say that this is actually something that's helping me yeah and I, at the time i didn't i wasn't trying to be an example for anybody you know i was just, was just to, being you i was yeah. just trying to i was just trying to be me and and i remember after i retired i i, uh, I started i got really into <coughs> yoga i remember the, i was living in northern california in 19 this was 2004 and i got a wreck and I, <coughs> home girl down the street was a grower so she had a couple pounds hooked me up and so I started to, to I made some butter and I put it in my oatmeal before I went to yoga class. I remember that first yoga class. It was the best yoga class I ever had in my whole entire life. And I and I knew that okay, this isn't this isn't bad for me. It's helping me take care of myself. It helped you focus it in helped, on the shit, right? I mean, get find out where I was holding my tension, where and to breathe there and just release it. It helped, it helped me. Where like yoga wasn't even like the big phenomenon that it is today it wasn't a trend yeah i was a little ahead of my time you were with that yeah yeah Did, didn't you open a you opened a 420 gym or 420 friendly gym right for a time well i had a so this guy jim mcalpine who started 420 games we came together to to work on a, a, pro, a gym project but for for many reasons one of them the the regulations about public consumption were still right and so for us if if you have to go in your car and smoke before you come to the gym, that kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. They already do that. Yeah, yeah. people are already yeah. doing it. And yeah. you want to give them a safe, a a safe, safe place. place. Yeah. And those those licenses don't exist yet. But I think in the in the future it will. And, and that would be something that, you know, because whenever you go to a gym, there's always that small group of stoners at the gym that just hit the fucking shit before they came in or whatever. Because, like, when I would go work out, the first thing that somebody would hit me, I'd be doing my routine and someone would be like, hey, you want to go smoke in the parking lot? So I imagine you got that a lot. I I'd, I'd, I have, I mean, I remember the first time it happened, I was at a, I was at a football game. I was at, a, I was at an airport in Sacramento huh. and I had a layover and someone came in and said, hey, we, I got a, a pipe in my car. You want to go out in the parking lot and hit it? That's great. It's, I've met a lot of interesting people that way. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy because you never know um, by taking that fucking what's gonna adventure. happen? Yeah, what's yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. I'll say this. I'll say this. That like I sort of vibed it out when it when it was my when it was me. You know, like getting approached at the gym. Sometimes I'd be like, uh, "All right, cool, let's go fucking smoke." <coughs> and other times I'd be like, "Nah, man, I'm I'm all right, man." But you know, I realized what was what was happening is I was going into the gym smelling like fucking OG so like it's just like a magnet for other stoners I mean I know who I am and people are, oh there goes the Cypress Hill guy let's try to smoke out with him but you know most people have like an etiquette right about it yeah yeah but when people got like fire and they think you should have it yeah they will break that, that yeah. etiquette code for sure that's funny have you ever come across that like when you know like you thought ah, you know what I'm cool fuck it let me try it and it was like actually worth the time doing maybe maybe a couple of times yeah, yeah. I've, I've met some really really cool people especially in other countries that's where i embrace it the most but that makes me like we were talking earlier about the smell like how are you about smelling like dank when you go places 
It depends where I'm going. Like if if I'm going to a hip hop event, I don't really yeah. give a shit. If I'm going to drop, you know, pick my little girl up at school or take her to an event, yeah, I don't want to be smelling too hard. They already know who the fuck I am. They, yeah. They're, oh, there goes that guy, right? Yeah. But you know, like for the most part, you know, I I'm pretty cool, you know, like about smelling like the shit because you know it's just what we've done for so long they're yeah. like damn you smell good i'm like yeah it's my cologne yeah it's called in the pocket yeah it's it's, <laughs> cha it's changing though I, I used to get freaked i used to get so freaked out about it but now i, I find especially when i'm in cali that I, yeah it's like I'm relaxed trip. right yeah. yeah what about when you were a player and like you had to smoke or sneak to smoke? i used to have nightmares i used to have nightmares that i was in the bathroom and a coach walked in while you I, were smoking and I, and well not even I was after I smoked but I, I smelled like uh, it and trying to like walk by him without him figuring it out I used to have nightmares about that <laughs> see, that, see that's the whole shit is that like it's 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 demonized in, in, in such a way that it would give you those type of anxieties about worrying about getting caught you know and I would imagine that that's that's why you had so many closet smokers for so many years because it had been demonized so much that lawyers, teachers, judges, doctors, fucking, and the list goes on, who uh, uh, who definitely partake in cannabis and to whatever degree. But they, they're never going to come out and say it because, you know what, I'm going to lose my fucking job for this. I'm going to be, you know, cast out, you know, amongst my peers and, you know, society's going to look at me this certain way. I think now it's a little bit more acceptable, but yeah, I mean, for so long, all them people would not walk as a proud stoner you know especially in sports you know I, there are so many stories of really good athletes who got the reputation as being the stoner on the team and got run off by the coach right mm -hmm. I, so many stories even yeah. even now especially in college if you get a reputation the, the coach will keep drug testing you and stay on you mm -hmm. and give you a hard time even if you're doing good in school and doing good on the field just because you got the stigma of being a, of being a stoner yeah were you, were you smoking in college when you're, when you're in Texas, I I smoked a tiny bit, and then my senior year is when I really started to I really started to smoke more. But I didn't really start I didn't really become a smoker until until my my third year in the NFL. Shit, that had to be real low key in Texas, because I mean you know they were at that time and even probably now are are zero tolerance state. You know, with cannabis, I mean, just for a roach or a seed or something, they give you some years behind. Yeah, that they'll, shit. they'll. I mean. We're we're in Austin. We were football players, so we were kind of protected. But, yeah. But yeah, they don't mess. They yeah, don't mess they don't around. Fuck around. They don't yeah. mess around in the south. I'll say this: there, there are some cops down there that are totally cool, and I think they even smoke. You know, they Cause, must. Because I'll tell you what: we were uh, doing this fucking thing called Lollapalooza, right? That, that festival. We were in Texas, and um, this fucking cop, you know, comes up to me. I'm thinking he's about to fucking, you know hit me up because we're Cypress Hill, you know, get that usual, like, you know, cop presence and all that stuff. He approaches me, hey, now I talk to you? Yeah, sure. I th and I, and I, I immediately thought he was going to ask me, where's the weed at? Yeah. And, and, you know, so I'm getting ready for it. And uh, he goes, I'd like to take a photo with you, man. Um, I got this here glass piece. If you could just hold it behind your back like you're hiding it. Really? I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh. So we took this this picture, and you know it's supposed to be like the 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 action is I'm trying to hide the bong from him, you know, making some sort of excuse while he's talking to me. But that's how cool he was. He was like, I just want my friends to trip off this this picture, like you're hiding the bong from me. I'm like, all right. All so 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 the cops give you a hard time. Just because some, I older, mean, that's a, that's a classic. Older ones did. <laughs> classic. Old, yeah. Classic. The, the older, the older cops, I'll tell you a, an, an even crazier story than that one, right? So we're coming home from, I'm getting dropped off at my crib from the studio um, in the, in the demo times, right? When we're barely making these demos uh, and that song, I had just written it out and I just dropped it that day. We get pulled over in front of these apartments that I lived in, in Gardena. And uh, it's Send Dog, um, one of our other boys from the group called Funk Dubious. He was with us back then, before that was even a group. And myself and one other guy. We get pulled over 
they pull us out and they're like, where'd you come from? Oh, we came from the studio. What, what, what's the studio? We're like, oh, well, we, we, you know, we're musicians. What kind of music do you do? Rap. All right, get out of the car. So we pulls us out and uh, literally, I'm like right in front of my apartments and uh, everybody's watching all this stuff. He, he, they start searching for, you know, weed and guns and whatever they think that they're going to find in there. And they found my notebook. And he start the guy starts reading and he does one of the, he does one of them little chucks. He goes, Hey, come check this out, tells his partner. And I could see I, I could see him lipping the fucking words. This pig bu, bu, bu. What what's this? This is one of your songs? <laughs> is this one of your songs, man? Like, yeah. It's one of one of our songs. It's about fucking you guys. And he goes, he goes, yeah, that's funny. He goes, you know what? You guys get your asses out of here. He tells the guys. He goes, you go ahead and go in your apartment and remember next time you're writing songs about pigs, remember this one. Let you go. Oh shit! And he hit me like that. You can't you can't make shit like that. But up. it was the craziest shit because I'm we're sitting there on the curb and we're watching them pull the car apart. But we know we ain't got nothing. And then he pulls out the notepad, and sure enough, that was the first page, you know, because it was freshly made, and he's fucking reading that, and I could see his lips moving. It was surreal, bro. I thought for sure one of us was going to jail. I think it had the opposite effect, where you called him out, so he, he couldn't be a pig. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, because realistically, I think, you know, and I want to get your take on on this too, you know, because the the whole Colin Kaepernick thing, him taking the knee, was based on, you know, police brutality around the country and whatnot. It got turned into some different shit, but I mean, that, initially that's what it started, and a lot of us can relate to that. No, you can't. know what I mean? So we call out those guys, but we don't generalize. We don't try to generalize and say, "Hey, all cops are this." We try to say, you know, there are there are great fucking police officers out there that actually do their job and give a fuck about people but then there are those pigs and those are the ones that we're talking to yeah you know what i mean and and uh fortunately we never ran across too many of those but we knew that they were out there but i'm telling you the fact that you called them out right i'm telling you the fact that you called them out they have to they have to be real about it i think so i mean I've always found that if you're like, you know, instead of uh, standoffish with them and just like, you know, man up, they're cool with you. You know what I mean? It's when you try to get funny with them. Yeah. When they get funny they get, with you. They get funny with you. Yeah. And they'll get funny with you real fast. Real quick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you I've know. Had, I've had situations. I want to ask you about, um, I want to ask you about your, the, arguably the greatest season in college football history. Yeah. Thank you. The year you fucking set the fucking Russian record. Yeah. I mean, did you, I mean, because I've heard stories that, you know, Ricky didn't have fun playing ball and like, you know, he had more fun um, when he was retired. But first of all, were you stoned that season? Were you smoking that season? That's when I started smoking. But, but, <laughs> but, but, but I, I was always too nervous to, to smoke before, before a game. Even before practice, for me, smoking was something that I did after, after just to relax, let it all go, and, and get my mind yeah. right for the, for the next day. Um, one time, I smoked before practice. I was playing in Canada for a year, oh, and, uh, and I had I had a I broke my arm, so I wasn't playing, and I was just starting to rehab. I was starting to get back, and so I was just starting to practice, but I was still hurt, and so it was a rainy day, so we used to drive to this covered area to practice, and we're in the car with with my teammates, and they pull out a blunt and start passing it around. And I was just thinking, you know, I'm not playing this week and I'm hurt. I'm just practicing. So I hit it. I had the most fun at that practice that I had in my whole entire life. I mean, I felt like, first of all, my, my Achilles that I tore in my arm didn't hurt. You didn't feel Second it. Second of all, I felt like I was a little kid playing in the backyard. That's when you began to feel in tune. Oh, and I'm telling you, it, it clicked it clicked something. And, and from that point on, I, it helped me, like, Re-engage and find a love for football again. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, since you played for—I mean, you played in both America, so you played like 
in the Canada for like a whole year. Is the stigma different? Like, is the league like less? Pre- like, is there less, pre- less pressure out there about like smoking? I it's, feel like that's so, like a big deal. So it's, it. it's funny. So that so when I got there, the the sentiment and pe- and I heard it at least twenty times. What's the big deal? It's just weed. It's, it's just like, weed. Like like, eh, like that. That was everybody's attitude. Is we don't understand what the big deal was, and that felt. That felt wonderful. And you know, that's in most countries. You know, they're like, what's the big deal? It's just cannabis. Yeah. You know? But I think more and more people are are getting on to that. I think, you know, you hear more and more of these young athletes coming out, you know, or getting caught caught up with with cannabis. And it's clear, man, you know, hey, this is what people want to use for their fucking therapy. I'm telling you, when when Gronkowski and uh and Chris Long, Howie Longson came out and they both said that they that they smoked when they played, that got that got people's attention. Yeah. Um I also wanted to ask you about Mike Dicker. Oh. How is it playing for Mike Dicker? And did, was Mike Dicker aware that you were getting stoned? Because he was known as a hard ass <laughs> yeah. fucking coach. Yeah, he, he's, he's a fucking crazy. I, he he was not he is not a hard ass coach. No. At all. He's he's a the most players coach coach I ever been around. He just gets that he just gets that jacket put on him because he's like no nonsense. Well, because right? if you're a football player, you, there's always that guy on the team, the leader that you know is a no nonsense guy on the team. Yeah. That was Dicker when he played. And when, when he, he became yeah. a coach, he, he was the same thing. Yeah. I remember my, my first my rookie year, um our first preseason game we played in Miami and our training camp was in was in La Crosse, Wisconsin. So we played in Miami, we flew back to La Crosse and we got in at like one o'clock. And so everyone went out to the bar and we had a two o'clock curfew. And Dicka was at the bar too. And so we were sitting there realizing, man, we gotta go home pretty quick. Dicka says, I'm extending the curfew to 4 a.m. <laughs> 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 you know, like, Let's keep this party going. And oh, shit. He was he was like one of us. Yeah. And he was only <coughs> it was only a hard ass if like you disrespected him or you disrespected the game. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, he's an old schooler, so you know the love of the game is is what pushes it all, right? So if you if you're coming in with, you know, not respecting how it goes down, yeah, I would imagine a guy like that. Yeah, I mean, and he's a fucking legend too, you know. And it's real. I mean, I I wish I wish I would have played for him more than just that one year because I feel like I learned so much about life and about football from him because he was old school. I mean, I had a high ankle sprain and I, I ended up. Um, I didn't miss any games, but uh, but I was playing hurt. And he said, you know, he said when I played, we didn't have high ankle sprains. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah, he was Iron Mike. He really, he really was Iron Mike. That's awesome. How was uh? How was your? T- I'm a huge uh, Miami Dolphins fan. My favorite team since I was a little kid. How was your time with the Miami Dolphins? Because you were like. As a Dolphins fan, you were like just incredible with the Dolphins. It was it was great timing. I mean, people forget on out. I think because the Dolphins have been struggling so much lately. Yeah. But during the eighties and and nineties, they were in the playoffs. Yeah. Every year, every year, and so I was there at the kind of end of that run. And when I got traded from New Orleans to Miami, it was that was my most fun football year ever. They had a great defense, and just being in Miami. Yeah. Being in my, and, it's a way different deal. It's and you know I had a, a big year at the NFL and rushing and it, it just was. That's what to me that when I was a kid thinking about being a professional athlete, it was that year that you envisioned. Yeah, and it, that's how it was supposed to be. Yeah, but then once I did it, I was like, okay, check, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what's next? What's next? Exactly. Right. Mm. The cannabis came next. Exactly, it sure did. Thank goodness. Like in a big fucking way. <laughs> Like, who who did you get support from that you didn't expect it? No one. No one. No one. No one backed you up on that, huh? Not in the NFL. Low key, they probably did, but no one wanted to come out. No one. I was surprised. Even even um, Denzel Washington. I, I I was I was surprised. Really? Yeah. I mean, his. I understood what he was saying, but he he he. What he said to me was, "Get that money." You know, and and I I can understand, I can understand where he's coming from, but for me it was it was about more than that. You mm. know, yeah. Was, to me, it was about more than that. It was principle. It was principle, and it was really you know when I started smoking in the in the NFL, what it what it really did is it opened my mind. 
You know, before my whole life, I thought I'm just supposed to be a professional football player. Right. It made you see more. It made me see more. And I realized that this is great, but there's so much more of life that's going to pass me by if I keep chasing this dream forever. Yeah. And so it ga- it gave me the courage to, to walk away and like to really start living my life. And realistically, you got out at a time where you were still healthy and not like had some of the injuries that you could have had playing longer. And the, the beautiful thing is when I got out, that year I spent off, I, I learned how to take better care of myself, came back and played another six years, and I was able to walk away from the game. Yeah. You know? And, and the things I'm doing now, I mean, I've, I, and you know, like, it's interesting, like, living in a time where this was just trouble. And now that it's, it's turned into something that is fun and it's, yeah. it can, like, could be part of our, our lives and something we don't have to hide. Do you think do you think now that that, um, you know, you have more states that are recreational legalized and, and, you know, there's medical ones as well. Do you think the NFL will take it off the band substances? Mm-mm. I don't you think, think they'll keep it on. They'll keep it on until it's federally legal. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's subjective, right? It is. You know. A, a, a player might be playing in a non-medical or non-recreational it'll give, it'll state. Give, <clears throat> it'll give certain teams advantages in free agency. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, legalize it. <laughs> Make it fair. <laughs> Make it fair all over Make the fucking court. The- <laughs> but hey, e- even though, like, I think if, even if you did legalize everywhere, there, there would be preferable states to go to or preferable cities, yes. right? Yes. yes, no doubt about it. Now, what's interesting is, when I was in Baltimore my last year, we we flew out to play San Diego uh, on a Monday night game. <laughs> you know, and, and this was back in 2010. And so for the players in Baltimore to come to, to California and be able to go to dispensaries. Oh, that must have been. We got our ass kicked. Oh, shit. Everybody was just totally fucking smashed. They weren't used to it. They they were, yeah. Yeah, you know what you got? Yeah, it's something you got to build tolerance. You got to, it, especially right. if you're not used to it. So that was like their first time that going. Was their first time. Damn. No shit. They lost their mind. Oh my they must god. Must have tried everything, huh? Yeah, you know they did. It was yeah, funny. And all the fucking <laughs> concentrates, edibles, because you know everybody's different. You know, some people might not want to smoke it, so they'll go have an edible or whatever. Or somebody wa- might want it a little bit stronger, so they'll go get a fucking concentrate. Mm. You know, so you figure there's all these different Especially types. Especially when it's your first You don't remember yeah. the first time you walked into a dispensary? <laughs> Man, it, it must have been like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, you lose right? your mind. No, I but shit, now Baltimore has uh, dispensaries, right? Yeah, they so do. I would imagine the players down there. Of course. Are I, I mean, I think on the spots. low, I think on the low, a lot of professional athletes are, are funding and, and getting behind a lot of. And they should, because that's a great fallback. You know, like. That's a great business to get into, I think. I think, I mean, I think especially for 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 athletes. I mean, because a lot of us grew up around it, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, you hear more and more from NBA players and, and NFL players, you know, about the usage and and how they've benefited from it. I mean, you know, we've had Matt Barnes and Al Harrington up in here talking about how it you know, helped uh, members of their family and themselves. And Matt was just chiefing through the season, you know, like he didn't give a shit. Yeah. Um, But it's it's great to hear the stories, you know, because it's like, hey, guys, and, you know, like Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the cat, you know, from the Lakers, he was smoking way back when, but they kept it such on the low, you know, that no one really knew. You know? I think that's the big thing for me is, and that was a major moment in my life when I decided I'm not going to hide it anymore. I'm yeah. just going to, just going to be real. And that's the best thing. <laughs> Don't tell my story. <laughs> hey, but that's the best thing, you know, because like, it 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 shows you taking a stand for what you believe in, obviously, you know, and other people can learn from it. Yeah. And I think you know the fact that you did that, you know, other guys back in 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 that other time, you know, people were less understanding. And I think. Even though no one followed you and stood up, people low key, you know, got inspired by it. You know, I'm starting to realize that more and more yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. You, you were way ahead of your time with the, the whole weed thing. You Fuck really, yeah, you really were. You were like one of the first, as I remember, as a as a kid. You know, I was like, I had never even heard of anyone doing that. 
honestly like I, I I mean we thought like people in our circles thought it was like G shit right there to do that I mean because I mean we realized as as you know as NFL fans and you know keeping track with what goes on in the NFL and how much motherfucking a, a certain player's worth and, and this and that and what you gave up I mean you know we we respected that because nobody necessarily just walks away from that especially when you're still in the prime you know yeah and you did it out of principle uh, yeah you know, that's the best that's the best part about it you, it was like a, a, a thing of principle for you you know what I mean yeah because um, you didn't give a fuck what the NFL was talking about you're like Fuck you! I'm gonna go play for the CFL. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, and that was like, I was like, they're okay. not gonna trip. I was like, Fuck <laughs> they, yeah. they didn't trip. Um, did did you enjoy playing ball? Like, I did. You did. I, it's it's in my blood. It's it's in my. I didn't enjoy all the other stuff that that Politics. came along with it. Yeah. But it's like you said when you started smoking, it 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 made you enjoy playing ball again. It did. It did because it it helped me realize and remember like aside from all the the crap. When I'm between those between those lines, that's my that's where I'm I'm most at home. Yeah, because you know the politics, you know, can, you know, sometimes take the love away because you know you get fucking fed up with all the shit and all the fines that you had when, when they would be on you and stuff like that. That you know, I I could see how it would be a drag. Like the, you know what, fuck. This is, I'm done with this shit. It just turned into something where, like, the, the three hours I got to be on the field wasn't worth all the other stuff I had to deal with. Right. You know? Yeah, because the press were on you. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh. I was just, just trying to, I mean, again, I thought once I make it to the NFL that I get to live my life. You know? Yeah. You and know it wasn't, what? And it wasn't like that. And so, I, ultimately, I was after freedom to be able to have the experiences I want to have in life. In, so, so how many of those 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 folks that you know are are in the 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 press and the media and the sports media that wouldn't touch you after the whole thing? Now that it's legalized in certain places, how many of them reached back out to you? A lot. Right? I mean, the funny thing, I, I got so I, I do some television uh, for ESPN, I cover some college football games, yeah. and so they'll call me in to, to answer questions sometimes. And they call me in to to talk about cannabis, and I and I just the resident thinking, expert and I, exactly. And I was thinking, <laughs> wow, you know. At one time, like there's these same people, you know, push me out, and now they're now they're yeah, now they're asking me to come and, and share what I know. And so it's it's come it's come it's come around. And I think one of the the big things, like you said, was people are starting to see it's helping them and their family members. My coach oh, yeah. at Texas, Coach Brown, I saw him a couple of years ago. And he came up to me and he said, you were right all along. He said, my brother has cancer and he's he's, he's using cannabis and is helping. Yeah. That's, that's a great story. It's a story that we've all been saying for a long time and it just takes someone to actually have to go have through Have that experience. It. Yeah. yeah. That's unfortunate because you could actually spread more education out and prevent it instead of catching it in the middle, you know, or something like that. But it, it's great that it people are starting to come back at you and say you know what you were fucking right yeah it feels good i thought you were out of your mind <laughs> but you were fucking right <laughs> it feels good we knew you were right the whole fucking time <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, put that away yeah we knew you were right the whole time we were with you the whole fucking the whole way we were like hell yeah the first thing I was thinking was like, you know, we got to get Ricky in the smoke box. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta get, for a long time, man. Yeah. It was it was like, how do we get a hold of this guy, man? You know, hey, it manifested because you're here now. Here I am. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, see, because we used to make boards of like the what ifs. Like, who could we get? Who would we want to go after? Like the fucking wish list. You know what I mean? Boom. You were definitely up there, man. Wow. You know, because what you did was prolific, man. You know, um, you had a fucking dope career and an, an even brighter one ahead of you. And, and, and you chose up, you know, to make a stand for yourself. And that, man, fuck. That, that's awesome. Yeah. No, I mean, let me, let me you know, push the compliments back on you. I mean, I think of... of you know, as a as a musician, what you guys did, what was it like to be so different? You know, you guys were unique. There's no one, no one that was out there doing what you guys were doing. You know, we we were just trying to like be us. 
you know, and, 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 and because we, we knew people in the, in the business where if you didn't know who you were, right, if you didn't have a grasp on who you were and what you were trying to say, you know, the, 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 the record companies would try to mold you into what they thought you should be, what they could market, what they could sell, what would work, right? based off of the talent you have, right? And we never wanted to be in a, in a box. We never wanted anyone to, you know, make those decisions for us. We just always made sure that we're representing us, ourselves, our experiences, and our experiences with our, our friends <coughs> that have come and gone, you know, past and, you know, present, whatever, and just, being ourselves and fortunately that resonated with people because you know i think people saw themselves in us yeah you know and then you know we started not just celebrating cannabis but trying to educate people with it you know so and did you guys get a lot of pushback yeah um radio stations some of them wouldn't play our shit because of it but you know eventually they came around to it because you know what what a lot of people lost sight of for for a minute in the beginning and in the middle of our of our run as cypress hill is they forgot we were a music group yeah and they fucking tagged us as a pothead group or a, or a cannabis group i feel the same thing happened to me people forgot yeah. that i was a football player exactly. especially the way i played football or people for, people forget and yeah then, and you I were get, a beast and i get labeled as, as a but yeah. see that's what i'm saying you know there lies where where um the beginning of the stigma has been wiped away because you had guys like yourself who were smoking and fucking doing what you're doing on a high level. You had guys like fucking Michael Phelps winning fucking gold medals, like straight up stoners, like functioning <laughs> at, at what they do best at the highest level, no pun intended, yeah. it, showing that those stigmas are all wrong, like the lazy stoner, the non-productive, the non-functional, you know, outcast of society shit. Nah, they got it all wrong. Yeah. And, you know, it was us just trying to <laughs> trying to prove everybody wrong on that end, too. Just being ourselves and saying, you know what? Fuck you. You're wrong about stoners. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the reverse of the role model thing. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I just want to give you your flowers while you're still here. Like, I just want to just thank you personally for bringing me years of happiness. Um, oh yeah! <laughs> when you were oh yeah! Like, like you, you literally, <laughs> thank you for like just, you know, I grew up playing football all my life and like seeing. You, I mean, you were the, argue, are, you were the best college running back of all time, in my opinion. Thank you. And, and and definitely one of the greatest running backs of all time, you know. Um, but just the joy you brought me and like how you ran, you ran with so much heart and it was beautiful to watch. Yeah, man, it really I, was. Yeah. I got to fucking second that. Whenever you'd break free, it was like oh, art, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it really was. It was, it was like a work of art. Man. And, uh, yeah, man. Thank you. So I want awesome. I want to thank you for taking the time to jump in the box with us, man. Yeah, this was wonderful. Hell yeah. Thank you. And you're invited back whenever you want. You've become <laughs> alumni of I the love box. It. I love you know it. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, let them know where they could find you at. So I'm on uh, Insta at, at Williams. Um, you can check out my website, rickywilliams.life. Um, that's where I'm at. I forgot to ask you before we before we go, because you know they they will shit on me if I don't ask this. What type of what type of flower do you like to smoke? Indica, sativa, sativa. hybrid. Sativa. You like yeah. sativas? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to only smoke sativas. Now I'll smoke sativas and, and kind of sativa leaning hybrids, but. Yeah. Uh, I love to smoke and, and, and read, and so mm. these TVs get me right. Yeah, they don't knock you in the head so hard. Yeah. You know, they, they allow you to function and not have that indica smash in the face. Yeah. I mean, sometimes when I, I know I need to slow down and take and sleep, then I'll, I'll, I'll hit a nice, nice indica. But I hate that feeling of smoking and then being stuck. Yeah. I was like, I got shit I got to do. That's not a good feeling. It's <laughs> yeah. like, like when you overdab. Yeah. You know, overdabbing. You'll feel like that. Yeah, where you, the day is like, you're like, what happened? What happened? what happened to my day? For real. You got any new projects you got that you want to say? Plug or anything? Well, just my <coughs> just my uh, my wellness company. And <coughs> you make medicine. Right Check on. us out at Real Wellness. 
Check him out at Real Wellness, man. Ricky Williams, one of the best to ever do it, goddammit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, make sure you get educated. Leave comments. Subscribe to the channel. Fuck with Ricky, man. Please. And stay blazing. Got the heart of a light. Soul of a tight. Mind of a genius. Fly with the height. All your senses are senseless. Resistant, relentless. It's what they call you when your grind is endless. Let's get this. They say I'm psycho. I move weight like lipo. Got a big crib like Michael. Out the window with a rifle. My wrist game on light show. I'm backstage with white hoes. This is Ricky Williams and you're watching Be Real TV.